as I've been contemplating on this video for a couple of weeks now. And, uh, of course, you guys know we been, I've been sick for about 12, 13, 14 days. Uh, but when I first got sick, I saw online where the Uvalde uh, school incident happened in Texas. And I'll briefly talk about that. Uh, I'll put a link down somewhere in the description box or something down here. Uh, all of you should know about the Uvalde uh, school shooting and all these police coming from all over the state and doing nothing for 77 minutes and letting all these children be murdered because of their cowardice. Um, not only did they do that, The murderer was allowed to go for so long it got on local radio and parents started coming they wouldn't let the parents go in there and save any of their children all right so a lot of times I I wish I could sit here and just talk about good things but unfortunately uh, a lot of good things aren't happening, not around me. Um, miracles are happening around me every day, and I'm very thankful for those miracles. Uh, all right, I want to talk about where are the patriots? Where are the men? Uh, so let's talk about that for a minute. I'm going to try to get a little more comfortable here. I'm sitting here in this room and it's where my wife goes. And unfortunately, everywhere she goes, it's a disaster. She gets stacked up everywhere. All right. Where are the men? Okay, where are the Patriots? Uh, in watching the actions of the parents at Uvalde, uh, I'm even disappointed with the parents. Very disappointed. And we're going to go into why and what to expect if shit like that happens up in around my kids uh, we're going to talk about some real concrete uh, versus cotton candy and wanting somebody to feel sorry for you and all this am I saying those parents are wanting that no I'm not saying that at all and I feel very bad for them uh, Something is fundamentally broken in the United States and in the world. Uh, very badly broken. And it's inched and inched and inched up on us that most of us are unaware of it. Especially people younger than myself. I grew up in a time where men were men. Uh, most of you have gr grew up in a time where you don't even know what a real man is. Uh, when we allow our children to be hurt or harmed by anyone, it could be the sheriff, it could be the governor, 
It could be the president of the United States. It could be the school superintendent. It could be policy. It makes no difference what it is. You're not a man. And you shouldn't be having a child if you'd let any of those entities, uh, any entity, come in and you not stand up and protect your child yourself. Um, I'm going to tell you what should happen in the Uvalde area. Uh, they have elected and gotten a new mayor and elected and gotten one or two new city council people there. Uh, but you know, just that, are you kidding me? That's a fix to something. These children are dead. They're gone. The cowards on the police department are still there. So, retribution years ago would have been something like this. Um, 20 people picked the phone up from different areas. Uh, if their children were allowed to be murdered, like in this case, I'm not suggesting anybody do this. I'm just telling you what would happen, at least in the deep south. What would have happened uh, 40 or 50 years ago? Multiple calls would have went out. Multiple officers would have responded. And multiple officers would have been Oft. That's how you clean up a coward problem. Because there's no judicial system that's going to clean up a coward problem. There's no judicial system that is going to fix a public authority overreach problem. And if you think there is, you are insane. Uh, Let's discuss other things. Um, if you know your history, and I'll explain this to you, tarring and feathering, there should be multiple, multiple tarring and featherings going on all across everywhere, across the world, hourly and minutely. Well, what is tarring and feathering? Uh, you know, tar, like pitch, tar, uh, the black liquidy stuff, uh, they put it on roofs and, uh, they put it down in liquid form. You, a lot of times they're doing it in the winter and you see the steam coming off the tar and then the tar sets and hardens. Makes good roofing material or sealant. Uh, once it has set and dried. Um, you also see it in the lines and the roads. Uh, those black lines. It looks like black Play-Doh put in, in between cracks. That would be tar. And of course, all of you should know what feathers are. Uh, go down to City Hall. Uh, 50, 100 people. Uh, the tar is not so hot that it's just going to burn the outer layer of the skin off. And this used to be a standard practice all across the world, and especially in the United States. It was a standard practice. It was not illegal to do this. And it should be legalized today for public officials as it was in yesteryear. You go down there, you throw warm tar on these people, and then you throw buckets or bags of feathers on them. Uh, before they can get to any type of soaping source, uh, the tar dries on their skin, the feather dries in it. It's very uncomfortable. 
everybody knows for a minimum of about a year that a person has been tarred and feathered and they're looked upon in shame because they have done something terribly, terribly wrong to the public. And uh, the shame of not being able to get the tar and the feathers off of you, it take, take maybe about a year to get it all picked off of you, is the name of that game. So every time you go into town, every time you go to a grocery store, every time you pump gas, every time you hitch the horses up to pull the wagon, every time you go anywhere, they know you've been tarred and feathered. And only the most shameful of the shame get would get tarred and feathered. But I believe these people in... Uh, the police department in Uvalde. I believe Governor Abbott needs tar and feathering. He went there. He tried to, oh, well, it could be worse, you know. But, of course, his children are uh, completely protected by armed guards that would stand up for him, see. All right. There's a lot of issues, a lot of things that could be done. And it is beyond me why someone who you wear a flag on you on your t-shirt do you you got to make america great again hat or a, a u.s flag hat and you think you somebody you wouldn't uh risk six months of of your freedom to ensure the protection of the children around you or the elderly around you, or uh, these corrupt politicians stealing us blind, that you wouldn't maybe six months to a year put yourself up at risk in front of the magistrate to be in jail and just do nothing and then label yourself a patriot. You're no patriot. You're a nobody is what you are. You are an enabler of the tyrants. You can talk all you want. I can talk all I want. One of the big differences here is I'm an old man. But I'll tell you, I'll give you a couple of my last stances. And I was an old man then. Uh, I used to be very big politically. And we don't talk about that no more. Uh, I got the ways I lean. Uh, I am quite well aware that both parties are corrupt. There needs to be a cleansing. And I am aware that the only way freedom, uh, the only thing that can purchase freedom is our blood. Uh, Sydney, you're not going to legislate yourself into freedom. You can hang that up. Uh, you are not going to uh, elect your way into freedom. It doesn't work that way. The only item that can purchase freedom and anti-corruption and right is blood. All right. Now, have I been out here spilling my blood? No, I haven't. But I'll give you my last thing. The last big thing I did. Uh, we're at the state capital in the state in which I was born and raised. Uh, we are at a huge uh, congressional uh, GOP district uh, meeting to elect new leaders and whatnot for the congressional district. Um, I went against one of our own. Uh, I won't go into why, but if you look the guy up, Senator Richard Burr, uh, this guy is most, one of the most corrupt, crony sons of bitches ever in office, ever. Uh, this guy went from lawnmower salesman to multi, multi-millionaire as soon as he got elected into the Senate. 
So had something to do with the Second Amendment. Uh, got with a couple of friends, uh, happened to be lawyers. And we wrote up a censure uh, to put up in front of the congressional district to have it voted for on, on the floor of the district. Uh, I got there. Uh, they were asking for amendments and things of that nature. So I had the censure. I said, I'd, I want to provide this for uh, debate. And there's a couple of 300 people in there. Everything stopped. You could have heard, heard a pin drop. One reason is that's how much I used to be respected. So when I stood up, everybody shut up. So I handed the thing off. It went up to the executive committee. You know, they're all up there on a, and these uh, tables up on a platform in front of everybody. Got the flag and all this shit behind them. And, you know, they're the leaders. <laughs> so they're handing off. They're looking. They're shaking their heads. And, uh, there wasn't enough copies to go around. Maybe I had eight copies and there was 10 people at the committee chairs up there. Um, so one of them handed it to the attorney. And the attorney's looking at that. He looks right over. I'm 10, 15, 20 rows away from the front. But I hear his, that fat ass say, I'll take care of him right now. And he pointed at one of the others and said, you come down here with me. We're going to go talk to Mr. Allen. Didn't work out too well for these jackasses. They they tried to get me to go, go into a side room. And I was like, everybody stay quiet. Stay quiet. They want to talk to me about something. And I'm going to tell you what they want to talk to me about right now in case they shelve it that you can't vote for it. And the guy was, uh, we're, I'm, we're, they were, we're going to have you removed. And my exact words in front of everybody. Is that sheriff right there all you got? Because you need to tell him he needs to call plenty more. Because this ain't going to work well for any of you people. I said, trust it, believe it. I was 16, 18 years younger, but I still an old man then. Eyes got big as hell. This one guy, he's big around as a damn refrigerator, fat slob. The other guy was a little sleek, sweet talker, you know. And they were up there looking like the fools and the damn idiots they are, standing in the, up towards the front, but not on the podium. And I said, let me tell you two sons of bitches, get your asses to fuck. And this is exactly how I said it in front of everybody. The fuck back up there to your committee seat. And we are going to decide on this thing. And that is that. Well, when I first stood, everybody got mad. Oh, my God. I can't believe that someone would be sitting in here using such abusive language. Can you, Ethel? No, John, can you? You know, the normal bullshit of the day with these people. So they, it went on and they said, well, let's get this out of the way first. So I read the censure and I said, this censure is against Richard Burr. Uh, our GOP federal senator from North Carolina, he met with Obama and he was the deciding Senate casted vote to debate everyone's gun rights on the floor of the Senate and whether we were allowed to have a Second Amendment or not. And therefore, he needs to be strongly censured and no more GOP money needs to be going to him. 
people were sitting there. A couple other people got up. Well, this ain't true. This ain't true. And then people were, now hold on. That was on MSNBC. That was on Fox News. But when I first stood, I was the only one. Uh, by the time the debate was finished, there were only the people on the executive committee board that voted against to censure this piece of shit senator. In other words, every voting person at the uh, district meeting voted to censure the senator and only the six or the, the ten that held committee chairs sitting on the podium voted not to censure this guy. Yet they were sitting there saying we are the party of uh, Second Amendment, First and Second and Fourth Amendment rights and things like that. Well, it turns out they weren't for the Constitution at all. At all. At the end of that congression, uh, let me tell you what happened. News spread all over the television and all over the internet that that censure against this great and big and powerful jackass senator had been passed in my district. And just like a fallen house of dominoes, everybody started. Uh, they got we sent them copies of our censure, and they all across the board. I believe we had twelve congressional districts in the state at the time, and they I believe all of them, uh, maybe with the exception of one, uh, censured the senator, and his career was wrecked at that point. He he served for quite a few years after that. But his power base was completely destroyed. He was no longer a, uh, the powerful guy that he had been before. So, and I was not a rich man when I stood and did that. Point being, I was prepared to shed blood. I was prepared to fight that sheriff. And when I say fight him, I would have tried to get his sidearm from him and shoot him in his face with it and wouldn't have thought twice about it. That's something that law enforcement across the board needs to understand. If, if real men are produced again, the gig's up. The overreach and the power is uh, it's done. It's done. It's over with. And that is the logist of our problems right there, that the police can feel comfortable enough that your seven, eight, nine year old child, they can be comfortable in the fact that your child gets murdered inside the school that they are sworn to protect in their community and they cower down and nothing be done to them. There's no consequences. Those men should be shot. Those men should be shot. If the court system doesn't want to hear it, there needs to be a strict system of justice. Period. When we are at the point we cannot protect our children or our elderly and, and others who cannot defend themselves, we're gone. Nothing is safe for you any longer. Nothing is safe. Uh, you may be sitting in the comfort of your nice uh, half million dollar home right now. You may be like, well, you know, this guy's crazy. Uh, one day they're going to pull up on you. One day an out of control government agency may uh, uh, document you out of business. One day, one day, one day. So all this thin blue line bullshit, you take it somewhere else. And you people that are backing this, you need to stop it. Of course, that doesn't mean that you are for criminals if you don't back their the thin blue corrupt line. 
You need to start investigating what police are doing around you because it ain't good. And and let me tell you, they they've already proved it all across the nation during COVID. They'll do anything. They don't believe in a in any constitutional rights for you nor I. Whatever the man tells them they're going to do and they're going to be like, I was just following orders. And the same ones of you that back these people that just follow orders are the same ones that say, oh my God, those Nazis and those Bolsheviks that killed all those people and did all these terrible things. Uh, they were just following orders too, I'll remind you. So it's time to grow up. Well, there ain't nobody around us that's getting killed like the Nazis did or the Bolsheviks did. Yeah, there are uh, 30 or 50 kids, little kids just got murdered on account of following, uh, not uh, being told don't, don't kill the killer. So uh, there's people being murdered every day just because of orders and things. We are become we have become a too corrupt nation, and if we don't stand up and get these people to hell out, and I don't mean like let's get a new crop in. Uh, the elect electing it is not and trying to legislate it is not going to do it. They have got to pay for what they have done. See that their freedom needs to be taken. Their very lives need to be taken in cases of state, uh, local, and federal treasons. They need to be executed. And that's where we're at now. You'll never get the cancer out. They're like cockroaches. You kill half of them. And before you know it, there's three-fourths more cockroaches in the kitchen. There's no way to... Nice, a nice way to uh, do it. Uh, uh, and you're going to see it. I mean, that's where we're heading. And it, and it will be millions of more people who die in the streets if we don't stand up now. We have an out of control uh, the federal government across the board. We are being spied on. Uh, we are being, our money is being stolen from us and given to uh, foreign entities that are killing us and harming us right now, all the way down to the local cop who is abusing everybody around him or she. So this thin blue line and all this praise, see, they do this for a reason. They're letting the criminals run wild through the court system and getting it to where you and I, who want law and order, we just back these people over here to try to get whatever law and order we can, when the reality is we could have law and order very simply, very quickly, and very efficiently. But none of the sides want it. They want the division and the chaos going on for you and for me. Which results in dead children in schools. Among many other things. Uh, we are allowing uh, drugs all over the place. Where, where is the last drug dealer that handed a kid fentanyl? That the kid killed himself with that fentanyl? What, who, who got put to death last for doing that? You better start rethinking uh, where blood needs to be spilled on occasion to protect your children, to protect your, your grandparents, to protect everybody around you, your mom and dad, your children, your grandchildren. What we're doing is not working. Everything is continually escalating. Trump will not fix any of it. Uh, it's like with that wall. I was all for that wall, but I would argue with my sister. This wall will accomplish nothing. He can get it all sealed, put one behind it, and then another one behind it. Walls have doors, and as we've seen, somebody just come right behind him and open the doors. 
have to have constitutional amendments for things like that. And the news is not telling you, and you haven't been taught enough civics to even understand how your government works. That's why your government allows children to be murdered in school rooms. Because you don't even know your own government's function and what it is charged to do or to not do. And what your remedy is against your government when they are out of line or tyrannical or just totally negligent. They ain't a damn person that should be forced to do half the things that the people in this world are forced to do. All right, let's talk about this cockamamie hero bullshit. Let me enlighten you all on that. This, if the shit really hits the fan, there's no food, there's no resources, uh, government starts overreaching on the masses of the people, the two groups that are going to kill you dead as hell is the first group, the, the first line of killers will be police. Those in policing will come after you first. The second line that they will use to kill you deader than hell will be the military. And you, you look, I've had people in my family die in every single war we've had. Every damn cotton picking one of them. Uh, my uncle, who obtained the rank of full bird, bird colonel, as he got wiser years after he was retired, he would often say, there's no way in hell I'd fight a war for these sons of bitches any, anymore. No way. Because he got older and he got wisdom. And this guy had multiple purple hearts, two bronze stars, one with valor. No little stuff here. Real hero. Uh, was in three wars. World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. All three in combat uh, situations and in combat leadership. Uh, folks, you just need to wake up. You need to wake up this world, and, and uh, to you men out there, do you got kids and things like that? You better start thinking about what the hell's going on around you instead of just getting up in today's age and saying, well, as long as, I can, as, long as my kid's not getting in trouble, as long as they're making good, good grades for what? Well, I, as long as I got enough money to send them to this universe, university for what? Are you not looking around you? I mean, have you not opened your eyes? You may, if you've got a boy, you're sending them up to a corporate place uh, to get bent over and screwed, literally. Their pants pulled down and screwed. That's the world you are allowing to happen for your boy. For your girl, what you're allowing to happen is for a big, strong man to claim he's now a girl and to just beat the hell out of your daughter. And you're just sitting there and you're thinking about university and a good job for them? You better start really thinking. And I'm going to end this for full circle around to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. Are you shocked that I would, that it would go full, full circle and come around to Jesus Christ? You probably are. Especially if you've been a church goer all your life and you're under 60. Because chances are you haven't even been in a real church. And you have no idea about the real God, the real Christ. Uh, folks, you better get it together. For 150 years, do you know what the streets of Rome, what they lit the streets with? For the first 150 years of Christ worshipers, 
They lit the streets with the cut off heads of Christians. And that's something else you need to really be worried about. Because all of this other stuff has been allowed to happen and man has been effeminized and all of you are weak and too scared to risk your little freedom or too scared to spill some of your little blood out there so that your children will be safe. The reason why you are that way is because God, the true Christ has been taken away from you and you have no idea what's even going on in this world around you and you are blind. So I say, do not be woke. I'm telling you, wake up, awaken. Because next time could be your children or your grandchildren down there at your local schoolhouse and that you or I allow what happened in Uvalde or what happened for that transgender thing going up in that school in Tennessee or any of the rest of these schools. How come these parents that have produced these little killers are still walking around? Uh, oh, because, oh, they didn't do nothing? That's why they shouldn't, the parents of these school shooters shouldn't be out here walking around free. Everybody, oh, well, I feel so sorry for them to have such a mentally ill kid. No, they made the mentally ill kid. They brought the kid up in a godless home. They're the ones that was too busy worrying about the university or what kind of good job the kid was going to get or to have a fancy car to drive the child around in or a fancy house for the child to live in. Everything else was more important than the child that turned out to be a killer. And, and these parents need to be held at fault. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And until we get back to some semblance of being loving enough to punish these bad people and to stop them dead in their tracks by whatever means necessary. Uh, why would anybody follow a law in North America today or Western Europe and Western society period? It seems like the only laws apply to the working people that are taxed to death to enrich these fat cats but that the laws don't apply to them. That means the laws should not apply to you nor myself. And we bet you're, you're going to be standing up one day and you're going to be really fighting. You don't, you don't get that. You don't understand that. But there's going to come a day the mob's going to come to your house and they're going to kill you dead or nail. And you will be one of the idiots that sat back and let it happen. Not like the Jews in Germany. Go get some real history and look at the 13 million of them that the Bolsheviks murdered in Russia. They just sat back. They they were the ones that felt to make that, that they had the power and then Stalin killed the hell up out of all of them. You don't hear one word about that. They don't teach that no more. But they taught us. Go look that up how they reeled them in like the idiots they were before the slaughter. That's what's happening to you right now. You are a damn pig wallowing in slop, no matter how good you think it looks. And they are fattening you up for the kill. And they are going to eat you up. We need to bring back tarring and feathering, public shaming, And things much worse and vile. And if we don't bring these things back, they are going to kill almost every last one of you. And you need to be sure of it.